If you think that you need to find a niche in order to grow your business, then quite frankly, you're wrong. And over the course of this video, I'm gonna teach you some key strategies that are actually gonna help you grow your business and why a niche right now perhaps isn't the best thing for your business. Now, if you're new to the channel, then my name's Ross Welch and I currently own three businesses. I own a face-to-face service-based business, I own a rental business, and I also own an online business too. So I have a pretty good understanding on how to market and run a successful business. And through this channel, I've made it my mission to give more away for free than most people would have you pay for. If that sounds like something you wanna be a part of, then make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the community, and feel free to post a comment to things that you want to learn because I reply to absolutely Absolutely everyone. Now over the course of this video you might have noticed it might go from bright to dark and that's because we have an open plan studio here with natural lit roof lights which means that on a cloudy day like today it makes it near or impossible to create a video that's exposed correctly from start to finish. But that's not why you're here. You're here for some solid business advice so let's jump straight into this video. Now you might have heard people say in the past that having a niche is really good because when you find a niche, you can almost charge unlimited amounts of money for whatever it is that you do because you become so bespoke, so tailored, so custom at that one thing that you do really well that you only have a select few clients but because those services aren't available almost anywhere else, people will flock to you and therefore that's really good for business. And yeah, you know, I have to agree that that is a good point, however, in the current climate and everything that we've experienced over the last year, two years now, having a niche is possibly the worst idea you possibly could have. And here's why. In short, let's say um, I'm an event filmmaker, let's say, or even involved in the event business at all. Maybe I run events, maybe I uh, sort out stands or I'd, I'd only do advertising or some kind of uh, print promotion for events. How many events have taken place in the last year or the last two years? Perhaps next to zero? So you can see why actually having a niche at the moment in time can be really damaging for your brand. And what that also does is that also means that you've got a load of people that are all now out of work or searching for jobs. So they're gonna have to either expand on their portfolios, expand on their businesses and try and look at other areas. So that's why having a niche can be really, really damaging. However, when you look at a company like ours, and I'll talk specifically about our video production company, we have a very diverse portfolio, doing anything from products in our studio, to veterinary, to corporate, to events, to sport, to you name it, we can film it and we've got it on our portfolio. And as a result of that, when the events industry went to nothing, it meant that we could still continue as a business and continue to grow because we had all of these other areas that we were able to utilize. When this area shut down, we moved into this one. When this one shut down, we moved back to this one. And we had that portfolio already to help us have those key conversations. Now, if you're in a creative industry, whether it's web design, uh, creative design, animation, video production, whatever it is in a creative sense, your portfolio is absolutely key. And having a strong, diverse portfolio is gonna be something that means that over our current climate, and I don't see this changing anytime soon, it's really important that you try and diverse that portfolio as much as possible. Now, if you've only ever done websites for let's say um, the event industry, just because that's the easy one to go to, if you've only ever done websites for that, it does make it a little bit harder to sell that to perhaps a building company because they're, they're completely different styles and, and different tastes. And don't you need to remember that also not everyone's creative. So sometimes you'll speak to people in businesses who aren't creative, but you as a creative person have the curse of knowledge. So you know that you could do the job for them, but you've got nothing to actually show them specifically, hey, this is what your website's gonna look like. This is what your competitors are doing, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you might want to use then a free of charge strategy or a swap strategy where you can swap some kind of services, perhaps if you're in a product-based business or something like that. But those strategies could be really good at helping grow that, that portfolio. And then once you've done one website or one graphic design or one logo design for, for one particular person, perhaps one building firm, let's say, then that gives you an opportunity to talk to more building firms and, and pitch the same idea because all of a sudden your portfolio is starting to grow. Now that becomes really hard if you are an established business already and you've been really hit hard over what's happened over the last couple of years, then yes, it feels like you're taking back steps, but you really need to put pride aside and think what is best for your business. And we do this every single time we want to move into a new industry. So if we want to move into, uh, let's say sports and we don't have any sports background, then what will we do? Well, the first thing we're actually gonna end up doing is 
is doing some free of charge jobs or some swap strategy jobs in order to build a very small but good portfolio so that we can go and pitch paid for work to other businesses. We'll then do that in the product industry. And with products, we might narrow that down further, such as drinks, alcoholic drinks, non-alcoholic drinks, protein bars, gym wear, tech products, all those things. Now, it makes it so much easier to make a sale once you have a portfolio in that area. And I'm obviously talking about a creative sense here, but this also works for other businesses and other areas as well, such as service-based industries, such as car mechanics or things like that. It's thinking about how can you capitalize on the most amount of markets, not just this one small niche. Now the term niche unfortunately can be really broad and it's generally split down for people who know more about it into three sections. So you've got your broad niche, then you've got your micro niche, and then you've got your nano niche. So each time the idea is that over a period of let's say three to five years, that will determine what kind of niche you have because you end up working in one area and then your clients normally determine what niche you'll be. So for instance, if we had loads of people coming through the door for sports, then that would sports would effectively be our broad niche if that's all we ended up specializing in. But then it might just be that we do winter sports, which would be uh, a micro niche. And then a nano niche might be that we only do winter sports for snowboarding or for um, a particular brand or for Instagram videos, you know. So that's how your niche starts to, to narrow down a lot. So, so the point is that over a period of years, your clients, unfortunately, you might want to try and push your business in one particular niche area, and unfortunately, you just find yourself that all the work's coming from this one particular area over here, so therefore, you should adapt as a business and follow the money. Now, you can see already that if we had a micro niche of, let's say, we only do Instagram content for winter sports athletes, then what's happened over the last period of time? Well, we haven't been able to travel. So where's the bulk of that money going? It's going nowhere because no one's spending money. We're not able to go on to resort to capture that content. So our alternatives are to look out our other areas. You can have multiple niches. So I've been given niches a bit of a hard time, to be honest with you. It's not the be all and end all like some people think it is. I speak to a lot of people through my coaching company that really think they need to find a niche right now in order to be successful. And that's far from the case. And that's the point that I'm trying to prove. Now you can have lots of niches niches, lots of broad niches, for instance. So we do product photography specifically for Instagram, let's say, you know, or those kind of things. And we also do veterinary content for businesses or, you know, there's loads of little broad niches that you can have. But my point being, just make sure you've got a diverse portfolio and think about this. Think about how niches can apply to your business and, and how they can help you. It might be that you've actually found a specific speciality or a niche that you're currently in that is working really well because of the current climate. Could you imagine if you only sell products that help fight COVID-19, such as antiviral gels or things like that? Now, that's a pretty specific niche, but if you're in that niche right now, guess what? You're making millions and millions of pounds. So yes, you know, I do take this with a pinch of salt, but it's just because I see so many videos saying, oh, it's so easy. It's so easy to find your niche and anyone can find a niche and these things take time but also it's not always the right fit for your business and if you are following one particular niche because that's what you're really passionate about, just make sure at minimum that you're using other broad niches or you're using just other industries, other um, other areas to help grow your business. That is really the key to running a successful business in 2021. And I can speak from experience covering our three businesses that we have today. These are the things that we constantly think about when we're looking at marketing, advertising strategies, and also how they link to sales. It's important sometimes to just put pride aside or what you think is the right decision and use the factual evidence, the analytics to tell you, hey, all of my clients are in this area. Is that the wise this thing? Should I put all my eggs in this one basket? I personally don't think that's a good idea in 2021. So I hope you found this video useful. It's something different and it's a different way of thinking to what most people on YouTube are trying to tell you. Most people are yes men and they're trying to tell you exactly what you want to hear, but I'm here to give you the facts. From my own experience, these are the things that are working. If that's something that resonates with you, if you want pure business facts that's gonna actively help you grow, things that I'm doing right now that are applicable to what's happening in 2021, then please do hit the subscribe button, help us grow this community, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video, peace.